Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tova. It is so good to see all of you. Let me ask a question before I even get to what I want to talk about today. We've got, as Rabbi Ern mentioned before, all these different things that we can say to people. It's Shabbat and it's Rosh Hashanah and it's a holiday. How do we know which thing to say first? That's something I've asked before. I've asked on other occasions. But if you've got Shabbat and Rosh Hashanah, like we do today, we have to say Shana Tova, we have to say Shabbat Shalom, we have to say Shabbat Shalom, we have to say Shana Tova. Which one do we say first? Because you know our tradition, it's not, not going to leave that up to chance. Some rabbi somewhere said it, and Nat, what do you say? Shabbat Shalom, and why do you say that, Nat? You're right, by the way. Because what? Because Shabbat is important. Shabbat is important, and it's true. Well, the Rosh Hashanah is pretty important too, right? You're actually correct. We do say Shabbat Shalom first, and what our rabbis tell us is when you have a choice between something that is more frequent and something that is less frequent, you always do the more frequent thing first, and then you do the less frequent thing. So since Shabbat comes every week, and Rosh Hashanah comes, thank God, only once a year, mm-hmm. right? We start with Shabbat Shalom, and then we go to Shana Tova. So what I want to do today, actually, if you remember from last year, for those who are with us on the first night of Rosh Hashanah last year, we had the opportunity of taking a tour through our machzor. It was the very first year that we used these new machzorim, and we, we took the opportunity to look through the machzor, to get familiar with it. And I sort of want to do something similar today, but with a little bit more focus. We all come from different places. And I'm not talking about places physically. I'm talking about we come from different spaces, from different places in our head. We come from different walks of life, from different experiences. And we all get together here, and somehow we're all supposed to have the same experience. And intellectually, we know, well, that can't be. How can we all possibly have the same experience? We can all do the same thing. Yeah, we might be singing the same song. But maybe for some of you, it's the most favorite song you have. Maybe some of you have never heard it before. That's going to be a different experience. And so I want us to think a little bit this year about Rosh Hashanah and how it is that we can experience it differently at the same time. And our liturgy and our tradition actually gives us the path in which to do that. There are actually a total of five different names by which this holiday is called. Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, we know that one. We've already talked about that one. But there are four other ones. And as we look into our liturgy, we actually see all four of them mentioned in different places at different times. And I sort of hear our rabbis telling us, well, sometimes your Rosh Hashanah is going to be this way. And sometimes your Rosh Hashanah is going to be that way. And for this person, it may be a completely different way, and that's okay. We have to find the name of Rosh Hashanah, find the, the meaning in Rosh Hashanah that speaks to us today. And tomorrow it may be different. So let's look. Let's go on a little bit of a guided tour through our, our machzor here and find the four different names of Rosh Hashanah. The first is on page 143. These are all, by the way, going to be in the Rosh Hashanah Musaf service. They all take place in that, in that service. 143 tomorrow, the ark is going to be opened, our chazan is going to get up and daven unatane tokef. And he's going to, as part of this prayer, and I want to look at, um, I found it in the Hebrew, I have to find it in the English. There we go. Looks sort of about a third of the way down in the English. The great shofar will be sounded, and the still small voice will be heard. Angels will be alarmed, seized with fear and trembling, declaring, Hine Yom Hadin. 
This is the day of judgment. For even the host of heaven is judged, and no one is innocent in your sight. All that lives on earth will pass before you like a flock of sheep. Let's think about this for a moment. What feelings are evoked when we read this prayer, when we hear this prayer said, when we think about Rosh Hashanah in terms of Yom Hadin, just call out a feeling, whatever, whatever, whatever it evokes, just call it out. Awesome. Awe, good. What else? Fear, good. so quiet today. Anxiety. Anxiety. Especially because I'm sitting here waiting for people to talk. <laughs> Good. Yeah. We hear solemnity. We hear judgment. We hear fear. We hear seriousness. We hear awe. We hear accountability. We hear weighing our actions. We've heard this before. This is this season. And Unatana Tokov expresses those ideas so powerfully, but it's not the only way we think about Rosh Hashanah. Let's turn to page 127. This is more towards the beginning of the Amidah, the fourth bracha, speaking specifically about Rosh Hashanah itself at the bottom of the page. <clears throat> you have chosen us among the peoples, loving us, wanting us. You have distinguished us among the nations, making us holy through your commandments, drawing us close to your service, and calling us by your great and holy name. With love you have bestowed, bestowed on us Adonai, our God. This year we're going to add in Shabbat and Yom Hazikaron, the day of remembrance, Right? This idea of memory. Now, Yom HaZikaron, to the modern Hebrew ear, is actually not today. Yom HaZikaron is Memorial Day. It's the day that happens right before Yom HaTzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day. But the original Yom HaZikaron and the way in which we refer in many of our brachot to today is the day of remembrance. So what are the feelings? that we get from thinking about Rosh Hashanah as Yom HaZikaron, Day of Remembrance. Yes? Door the door, generation to generation. Good. Somber? Good. Gratitude. Connection. Grief? Grief. Hope, respect. What's interesting is it's unclear, by the way, as to who is supposed to be doing the remembering. Because in some of our prayers, it's we're asking God to remember us, but then certainly we're all here because we need to remember our relationship with God. And so there's this interesting back and forth with this idea of Yom HaZikaron, the day of remembrance, um, that you don't have with Yom Hadin. Yom Hadin is really one way. God is the judge, we are the judged. But the remembrance is more bilateral, it goes back and forth. Now, the next name is actually in the very next phrase. It is called... Yom Tru'ah. Yom Tru'ah. It's actually, this is one of the names that we see in the Bible. A Tru'ah is a sounding of the shofar. It is the day of blowing the shofar. Yom Tru'ah. What are the feelings that are evoked by that? Memories. Memories. Celebration. Celebration. I heard something, but I didn't hear what it was. Joy. Joy. 
call to action. Community, right? It's a whole different aspect. Now, it's one we're used to. We see it. We come here. We wait for it. And I'm sorry, you're not going to hear it tomorrow because it's Shabbat. But if you come back on Sunday, you will. We don't actually blow the shofar on Shabbat. So we will not be hearing the sound of the shofar tomorrow. We will, in fact, hear it on the second day. But all of these things are evoked when we think about Yom Tru'ah, Yom Tru'ah, the day of sounding the shofar. For me also, it's, that's the celebratory, joyful part of this holiday, almost in opposition to Yom Hadin, right? To the, to the day of judgment. The last one, anybody know what the last one is? I'll be really impressed. It's on page 158. And we find it actually in, at the end of each of the three sections that are unique to the High Holy Day, Musaf, um, uh, Amidah, the Zichrinot uh, Malchiyot Shofarot sections. And we can see, it says, today the world stands at birth. It's actually a diff, a, a, not such a great translation. Hayom harat olam, today the world was born. And it's one of the names of Rosh Hashanah, Yom harat olam, the birthday of the world. What do, we, what, do we, what do we feel when we hear that? The birthday of the world. Fresh start. New. New, yes. Yeah, feeling small, feeling part of something much bigger than we are. Creation, Creation Breshit, it connects us back to that. Yeah, for me, for me, this this is the the idea within Rosh Hashanah that helps me think about renewal, that helps me think about the fact that creation is something that not only happened, but is continuing to happen, right? And we're part of it. We're part of it on a cosmic grand scale, which I think in some ways makes us feel small, but we're also part of it on a personal scale, which can make us feel like the center of everything. Because that's what today is about from, for, with this name. It's about the birthday of the world and renewal of everything. Four different, well, five, if you think about Rosh Hashanah, just the new year, five different names, five completely different ways to think about this day. And so I encourage you, tomorrow and Sunday, as we go through this liturgy, try to figure out which, which name you're connecting to. Which name speaks to you this year? Lean into that. Find those prayers that help you express that, that help you find meaning in that. Over these next two days, we're going to, we're going to be able to hopefully find those things that we need the most. And we all need different things. But as we see, our tradition is rich, our liturgy is rich, and these days are rich in possibilities. So we hope, and I hope, that you thirstily drink of all of these possibilities and find those things that help satisfy your thirst, that help satisfy your need to make this an incredibly meaningful Rosh Hashanah. Shabbat Shalom. Shana Shabbat. Shabbat.